It's a busy time of the year for EKU Athletics. Basketball in its final couple of weeks of the regular season and both baseball and softball are underway. We begin with softball and Zoe Mahalos is our guest and we've got you for many reasons. You started all the games last year as the catcher, all the games this year so far, but you accomplished a feat few have in softball history in NCAA Division I against Presbyterian two Grand Slams. Couldn't do it without your teammates getting on base. No kidding, yeah. <laughs> what was that like? Um, it didn't really feel like it happened. Um, again, like it was good. Like we're hitting the ball pretty well. The teammates are, my teammates are getting on base. Um, and I feel very calm in the box right now. Mm -hmm. And so if it's there, I'm going to hit it. And if it goes over, it goes over. It just happened two times in a row. <laughs> so you do it the first time. Mm -hmm. And then you step to the plate the second time. Base is loaded. Did it come into the back of your mind? Oh, my gosh. It's a, it's a possibility? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. You were had, focused. Yeah, I was really focused, and I was not expecting something to hit, that's for sure. We talk about uh, softball, and I've, I've said this with everybody that's been on the show, including Coach Worthington. You have a different schedule than most sports because you play these round-robin tournaments early in the season, I think four of them, where you play – two times a day, may get five games in on a Friday through Sunday swing. And do you feel like this is more almost preseason for you in the sense that conference comes and things change? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, it is a preseason for us, and it gives us a, a chance to get on the field and get all of our kinks out and our nerves out before we actually head into the real stuff. And, of course, this stuff is important. We want to do really well, but it does give us an opportunity to kind of get our feet wet for the season. Right now you're leading the team batting uh, uh, with an average of four one four and hitting the ball well how do you you said you feel like you're in the zone you're locked in how does that come about is it through practice getting ready or um, I think it's a year under my belt mm -hmm. um, last year this time I was very nervous in the box very tense in the box swinging at anything that came my way and I think having a year under my belt and understanding that I don't have to swing at every pitch and I can be patient and choose mine um, has really helped me out and uh Again, like just not really thinking about it, not putting too much pressure on myself because the false pressure is what really gets you. And just getting in the box, not thinking about anything but hitting the ball hard. You're a sophomore that started, as we said, every game your, your freshman year. You come from Colorado, so you come out from the, uh, the high plains in front of the front range to, mm -hmm. to the bluegrass. Uh, how's that transition from high school and at home to college and on your own been? Um, it's been pretty good. The first couple months were a little tough because uh, I have a really good relationship with my family and uh, I think I grew with that relationship the last year that I was there. So coming here has been uh, a little bit tough. I love where I am and then it really, really helps that once you get here you have an immediate 20 friends. Yeah, yeah. Co coach has always had a, a family atmosphere mm -hmm. around absolutely. the softball team. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a big difference. Uh, the goal for this team, you win the regular season. You're picked to win it this year in a tight race with a couple of other teams' preseason prognostication. Uh, I know you want to get to the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament. You've got to you got to grind a way to do it. But is that the is that the key goal? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's always the goal. And I think uh, the standings coming out this year and our performance last year really puts a target on our back. So it's going to make it a little bit tougher for us this year, but I think we can do it. You have five pitchers that have, have pitched so far this year. Mm -hmm. Three of them have started. So coach is looking at where does the rotation go as you get into conference play. You're behind the plate, so what are you seeing from your pitchers? Um, I think this is these first couple tournaments are a good opportunity for them to uh, get their nerves out, uh, again, get their feet wet. It's kind of cool seeing the differences that are uh, the different tendencies that our mm -hmm. pitchers have. Um, like we have Molly with the rise ball, then Murphy will come in with the drop ball, Bethany with her curve ball. Um, Murphy again with the change up. So uh, we have, um, and then Peyton will come in and she'll throw uh, her curve ball mm -hmm. for, uh, for junk and we'll get a lot of swings and misses on that and then Sammy with her screw ball. So we have a lot of different tendencies which really help us down the road because we have very uh, different pitchers. So the batters are facing different tendencies. Sounds good. You're a busy young woman behind the plate. Yeah. <laughs> good luck the rest of this season. Thank you. Okay, that's Zoe Mahalis, who is a catcher on the EKU softball team. And as we said, another busy weekend for the Colonels. They'll be in Chattanooga, Tennessee for the Frost Classic on Sunday. First home game, by the way, is on March 9th against Bradley. When we come back, we'll keep the focus on the diamond and talk to an EKU baseball pitcher when inside EKU Sports continues. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day 
requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Listen up. If you're a tobacco user, I've got one word for you. Quit. Quit. And I'm not just talking about smoking either. I'm talking about vaping. I'm talking about chewing or whatever. Now nobody says quitting is gonna be easy, but I'm here to tell you, you can do it. You just have to believe in yourself. If you need help, talk to the folks over at Quit Now Kentucky. For help quitting, text QUIT KY to 797979. At Eastern Kentucky University, we recognize greatness starts in the classroom, but it doesn't end there. You have to get hands-on, get real-world experience, and discover who you are meant to be. Be a crime fighter. Be a visionary. Be a colonel. See what you can be. Visit go.eku.edu slash colonel. Time now to talk EKU baseball season underway. Two and one for the Colonels. All games down in New Orleans. They'll be back at home this week for their first homestand of the year. Kevin Brown is a senior pitcher from Paris, Kentucky, and you got the first win of the year. Went five and a third innings in a win over Florida A&M. Had seven strikeouts. Two guys behind you ended up as a team with 14. So I thought it was a really strong pitching performance early in the year. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I mean. Coming out of the pen, I felt really good, had all my stuff, and uh, you know I had a good defense behind me. I was really confident in, in the people we put out in the field, and they made plays when they needed to. Uh, there was a couple hard hit balls that you know I, I wasn't sure about, and, and they you know made the plays easily. So that gives me a lot of confidence having them back there. The Rattlers scored a run in, in the top of the first. Your team put three on the board in the first bottom half, right. then two more. And so you got staked to a 5-1 lead, and it's always nice to pitch from ahead. Oh, yeah, uh, that makes that makes my job so much easier, having that run support uh, from my team. Because um, I'm not worried about if, uh, if I give up a hit, I have to think, oh, I can't let them score, or, or uh, you know, then I'll put my team behind. If we have a big lead like that, then I can pitch with the lead and pitch with more confidence. You were in the Andre Dawson Classic down in New Orleans, three games. It's a, a major league baseball initiative to focus on diversity and inclusion youth baseball camps. So that was a really cool event. Normally, historic, historically black colleges and universities, EKU was included. Uh, just tell me about that whole experience. Um, I mean, it's definitely a really cool experience getting to play with all the diversity down there. And uh, I feel like you know, playing in JUCO in Florida, I had been used to that anyway because there's a lot of diversity people from all over come and play there. And it was the same, you know, down at the Andre Dawson Classic. There was, you know, people from everywhere that were playing uh, on those teams. And it, it just brings a whole different perspective to how different, you know, places in the country and in the world play baseball. Yeah. The fact that you're on national television, you got a big win over Vanderbilt last year out of the SEC, nationally ranked. And so now you've been on three times. And yeah. uh, does it change you at all? I mean, does it kind of juice you up a little bit more? Uh, I mean, it's you have to calm yourself down before yeah. you go out there, because if you if you don't, then things might get sped up. Um, so you just have to think it's just another game. The don't change your approach to it. You know, you don't get sped up by just because it's on national television. It, you know, you have to do something special or anything. You just got to stay uh, focused and do what you usually do. The team's going to be a little different. It's makeup offensively this year than last year. Maybe not hitting the long ball as much, but uh, I see a lot of speed out there. Uh, what's your sense about what this year's edition of EKU baseball is going to be about? Uh, well, obviously losing Alex Holderbach. Yeah. You know, he really could swing the bat. and. Uh, we weren't sure coming in, or I wasn't sure coming in, you know, how that would change. But uh, our third game this past weekend, we had four home runs in that win. So uh, I'm not too worried about us, you know, being able to hit home runs to score or, or anything. But we have a lot of well-rounded hitters in our lineup. So we get on base fine and we can score our runners, you know, in a multitude of different ways. You went a little over the pitch count in that game. How, how's your arm? I mean, first game out. It's a little tired, a little sore still. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, it's going to take me a little bit to recover on this one where it's the first outing of the season. That's the first time that I've went that many pitches in uh, a little bit. So uh, we'll just see how it goes in my bullpen this week, and then I'll be ready to start this next weekend. So you're going to go against Maryland Eastern Shore one game. Coach told you which game yet? Yes, sir. Uh, I got the Saturday game, uh, the first game on Saturday. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. Kevin Brown, one of the baseball pitchers on the EKU team. And again, the home season, that part of it begins this Friday, 4 o'clock against Maryland Eastern Shore. The 1 o'clock doubleheader on Saturday, 1 o'clock single game on Sunday. By the way, then on February 26th, the EKU will be over for a Tuesday afternoon game in Lexington against UK. That does it for softball and baseball here on Inside EKU Sports. We move things inside to talk about about EKU basketball when we return. Take it from me, quitting tobacco isn't easy. It can take several attempts before you can finally quit for good. So if at first you don't succeed, quit. Quit again. And remember, even though quitting is hard, you don't have to do it alone. Quit Now Kentucky is with you every step of the way. For free help quitting tobacco, text QUITKY to 797979 or go to quitnowkentucky.org. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. We talk basketball now with head coach A.W. Hamilton. Big crowd, near sellout against Murray State. I know the result isn't what you wanted, but it was an entertaining game. Nick Mayo played well. John ja Morant draws a lot of people because he's probably going to be a lottery pick for Murray State. Uh, good atmosphere. It was, and uh, for me, and I was, it was overwhelming. Uh, the two games, you know, you look back at Marshall and then you look at this Murray State game, the two biggest crowds in the last decade this year. And, can't be more thankful for our fans and how they've supported us throughout the whole season. And you look at even when we go over to Georgetown College, they come with us. We go to Berea, they come with us. Um, they've been great and they've been behind us all year and I'm very thankful for that. You've lost six out of your last seven games and the first three of those, beginning with your next opponent, Tennessee Tech, extremely close losses. The message to everybody is you're so close and I know it, it's frustrating not to get the W, but I know you still believe this team has it in. I do. I love this team. I love our guys. I love how hard we play. You know, I, I stand behind that. You know what I said when I got here, we're going to play extremely hard. Um, and listen, you know, we were picked 11th in the league and we're fighting like crazy to make this OVC tournament. Um, our guys have not given up and they won't. Um, Nick Mayo, he's been an incredible leader. He's fighting like crazy. Um, you know, he was very vocal the last couple games and he's had great practices. So um, I'm excited for this week coming up. We got a great opportunity ahead of us. Nick Mayo has had double doubles for the last six games. Jamaro Brown's scoring has been good. Problem has been, Coach, that you don't have a third or fourth score giving you, let's say, 10 or 11 a game, and you've been shooting below 30, uh, below 40 percent the last few games. Yeah, and then you look at it, you know, where, where we are, we, <clears throat> we lose Hobbsy. Right. Hobbsy, that hurts us because, you know, Hobbs was a steady hand and he gets guys shots. Right. You know, you look at Hobbs' numbers from last year, his assist to turnover ratio was incredible. And then what he was doing for us before he got hurt. And then, you know, then you play 
tell you a little bit more than you need to, and he's a shooter, um, and you got to shuffle the lineup a little bit more. And you know, I, it's tough when you you know you when you're shooting mid 30s, it's hard to win games. And it impacts you on the other end of the court at times, right? It does. And look, we haven't converted off our turnovers right. like we were earlier in the year. Um, you know, we're turning teams over almost 20 times a game, but we're not getting enough points out of those. And we're not getting enough easy shots, you know, short shots, layups, floaters, it's shots in the paint. We need to convert on those. And, you know, that's what, you know, we've, it's crazy as it sounds, but we've had to spend time working on that. We're doing a lot of just layups and short shots in practice and because we got to convert on those. Big game against Tennessee Tech to stay in the hunt. You're a game behind with two other teams, a game behind the 7-8 position in the OVC tournament. So still in it. Junior Clay, their freshman guard, had a great game against you in their come-from-behind win when you played at Georgetown College. Nearly a triple-double, 22, 9, and 8 assists. Yeah, no, he's incredible. I, I love that kid as a player. You know, you watch all their games, and you appreciate what he's doing for, for Steve Payne and that, that program over there. And uh, We've got to control him if we're going to win this game. And, you know, we, we got a good freshman, too, Jamaro, who's starting to play right. much better. Um, so, again, it's a, it's a great opportunity for us. You talk about putting it all together. Probably where you got it from all five positions was the Jacksonville State game, your next opponent. You won in the game that was played at Berea, 88-70. to That was the first loss for JSU in the OBC this year. Yeah, you know, since then, like we've talked about, we just haven't played well offensively. You know, you know, even when you look at our Tennessee State win, you know, we shoot like 36% and win that game. We just, we still haven't got it going offensively. So, you know, we got to clean up some things. We got to get better ball movement. Teams are guarding Nick, you know, with two or three guys. And, you know, we got to get guys cutting and making layups and making short shots, making easy, simple plays. So, you know, a lot of things to work on this week as we get ready to play. All right, good luck this week. Thanks, Todd. All right, that's A.W. Hamilton. Here is the schedule for the Colonels at Cookville, Tennessee against Tennessee Tech on Thursday, 8 30 tip Saturday against Jacksonville State, 5 o'clock Eastern Time. We'll have the coverage at 100.7 FM, the TuneIn app as well, and also at EKUSports.com. The audio will be streamed, both games on ESPN Plus as well. Colonels back home on February 28th, next to last game of the regular season against Austin P. You can keep up with Colonel Athletics wherever you are on all of our social media platforms. Until next Next week, when we see you again here on Inside EKU Sports, we always say, Go Biggie.